love that they're going on boomsticks, guys. It's like Quidditch, but more fun. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Agatha All Along. I know this one's a little bit late, guys. Apologies, I was on the road, but I am back and ready to get right back on track. But yes, our last episode, we had the literal trial by fire. Our fire witch was uh, the one who was tested. She faced up against a generational curse that's been in her family for Lord knows how long, but she did manage to face it with the help of the coven and defeat it. But we did have a casualty, that being our teen. He got hit with a straight piece of glass, but there's been some speculation as to whether or not it was the curse that did that, but I digress. Either way, we see that he did get healed up by our water witch and uh, everything is good there. But when he asked Agatha about her son, she got real quiet. And speaking about Agatha's son, we see that Rio and Agatha kind of look like they might be revisiting the past there you know, their relationship dynamic. But uh, just before that happened, Rio let Agatha know that the boy was not hers. So yeah, we, I think a lot of people were speculating that Agatha was thinking that this boy could potentially be her son. The son we still are not 100% sure of what happened, at least according to Agatha. So still a lot of questions to be answered, ready to jump into this episode. So let's do that. But just before we do a reminder that if you'd like to be in the know when I drop these episodes, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode it's called Darkest Hour slash Wake Thy Power right now. Oh, for a second, I thought that was Sharon. Okay, we saw a crow following Agatha. We did not see a snake, though. Oh, God, they're here? I guess they're witches, too, and they are a coven. No, no, no. So the Salem Seven were the animals that were following her. That makes sense. They're coming. We have to go. Thank God. Listen to her. The Salem Seven. Scary black dresses. That'd be them. By stealing their power. Because her own mother tried to have her executed. Are you Small really detail? defending a noted serial killer, you creepy lurker? Are we jealous? She spared their young children. Yeah, and then they became a feral, hive-minded coven bent on revenge. That can't happen. The moral of the story, kids, is always finish what you started. Damn. She's not wrong. Everybody pack up your shit. Let's go. <laughs> I love that she swings her jacket every time. <laughs> this is so humiliating. Here. Why? Because it's a trope? Worse yet, they're an obvious symbol of female domesticity. And they're basic. Right? Oh, this is so cute. Oh, thank you. You could have done better. Right? I love you, sis, but your, your, your broomstick's really not doing it. All right, come on. Quickly! No, don't worry about the owl, let's go! That's not a normal looking owl, let's go! Oh! Good hit! Move! All right, let's go, let's go! <laughs> I love that they're going on boomsticks, guys! It's like Quidditch, but more fun! Keep up, team. <laughs> I love that Agatha's like natural. You gotta get off the road. So the Salem Seven are all daughters? All those witches had daughters? Just saying statistically, that seems like that's not likely. Great scene, by the way. E.T., but witchy. But seriously, not one of them had a son other than Agatha? That's weird. <laughs> but can't they just make brooms too? Or broom, flying brooms? I wouldn't relax yet, Agatha. <laughs> exactly, it's like, since we're up here, you may as well enjoy it. <laughs> the next trial. Who'd have thunk y'all would be happy to see the next trial? <laughs> uh. Run, run, don't walk. There we go. Wait, does that mean they're in there if one of them gets in? Ooh, okay, we're 80s now, right? Why does this look like the Stranger Things set? <laughs> it does. 
Oh, a tire swing inside. That's a great idea, actually. Whose pearl is this? That's a good question. Agatha's. All right. And who better to commune with the dead than someone who's put so many in the grave? Thanks, Rio. Your commentary unnecessary, but funny. Is that a Ouija board? We have to Ouija. No, it's not. <gasps> oh God! When did these Casio watches get in our hands? Uh, exactly. Chinese. Jen, you and me, we don't do this, right? Do not speak over each other. That's that's not written written there. Show me that. Three. <laughs> do not taunt the spirits. Agatha. I love that they all look at her. <laughs> exactly, sis. This is remove your hand from the planchette. If you do so, a spirit will be released. I mean, look at Agatha. Maybe we want a spirit. For ages three and up. What? Okay. What five-year-old should be sitting here playing with this? Oh, teens finally actually actively, actively being in the trial. I mean, I, I know he was playing music last episode, but he didn't really get involved involved until this one, I think. Like as far as the genuinely, genuinely getting in. Someone here with us during this witching hour. Witching? Agatha, what do we say about mocking? Agatha! <laughs> <laughs> the hair. <laughs> For noon, and there you were, bringing chills and thrills, and bringing on my own. Rio is laughing. I'm Sharon Davis. She's Agatha. <laughs> She's just scared. I mean, y'all didn't think you didn't really think that was Mrs. Hart, did you? Hey, at least we got all the jitters out of the way. Agatha knows what she's doing. Death. <laughs> We're not supposed to ask about death. Shh. What? He stated a rule. He didn't ask. Who do you want to punish? Damn it! <laughs> the only name that starts with an A. Don't let go, Agatha. Yep, this is where Jen's like, I didn't want to do this stupid game anyways. I'm like, oh. The first time? I hated this the first time. Meaning we need to... Spank her? Yep. Or we could just slit her throat. When people ask me why I don't have female friends. <laughs> He's right. Like, y'all are very catty. Where'd she go? Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't blame her. I'm not sticking around for that neither. Does anyone else hear that? Nope, nope. Just pretending I'm deaf. Don't look up. Don't look, don't look up. Just move. Just stand up. Just, okay. She's faking it. She's okay, faking it. Okay, Jen. Sweetheart. You okay? Jen, I, I think we need to reevaluate what faking it looks like. Not the bunny slippers. That's not the way you want to go. All right. Where is she? Agatha. Not the bear clock. I never like clocks that look like animals or characters that swing and stuff. Like, I'm not about that. Not even for, for horror movie reasons. I just think they're creepy. That is a ghost. Evanora Harkness of the sea. Oh, her mama. Nice having you in my body for a second there. Never felt so close to you before. I mean, what about in the womb? And you fools have willingly joined her. Stop embarrassing me in front of my friends, Mom. <laughs> right, this awkward teen moment. You must finish the witch's road. That's what Without doing. Agatha. Oh. Leave her with me. No! No way! A minute okay, ago you- Okay, Rio. Why do you hate me still? You were born evil. Damn. Well, you carried me. I ought to have killed you the moment you left my body. Okay. So we you have see, to go. Jeff. Agatha kind of has reasons for being the way she is. Not again. Leave her alone. Oh, okay. Come through with the powers. All right. Careful, careful. No! Agatha, stop. And I see 
Nicholas. Scratch. Nicholas Scratch! Damn, going straight for the heart. Is Alice okay? She sacrificed herself for you. Alice. Don't touch her! She was protecting you. But you don't deserve it. Damn. I didn't think she was in control of it. Alice. Alice. Can't she give it back? Oh well, sorry Alice, I'm sorry. I wish I could say no good deed goes unpunished, but... I couldn't, con I couldn't control it. Yes, you could have. Don't lie to me. I'm not. You wanted her power. That's what this has always been about for you, isn't it? I mean, you did your research. So that's what it means to be a witch? Killing people to serve your own agenda? In Agatha's case, mostly. Interesting. You're so much like your mother. Agatha knows who he is now. Very interesting. Hey, buddy. Stop. Hey, stop. Why? What is. Tate, stop. Stop. Somebody Maybe stop. you shouldn't be talking smack about people. Yeah. Possession? Mind control? I'm not a teen, I'm about it! He said, call me pet one more time. Oh, I'm sorry, sister girl, you didn't deserve it. We know that helmet, don't we? Not the on the nose song choice. Not the on the nose song choice. Okay, well, guys, that was Darkest Hour, Wake Thy Power, and Darkest Indeed. We got Agatha's trial, which I have to say, I think I was expecting a little bit more from it in the sense of maybe a bit more background on her. But with only about half an hour in these episodes, we can only cover so much. Actually, this is one of the shorter ones now that I think about it. But I guess the main takeaways from here is we have a little bit of idea. We have a little bit of insight, I should say, into why Agatha is such a distant person and why she has this desire to keep a wall between herself and other people and why she has trust issues. And it sucks, you know, to hear that her mother believed that she was evil. And again, we did not get the full story. Like I just, I know that there are cases where women for various reasons, just from the very moment their child is conceived, just don't have any love for them. And particularly when Agatha would have been born, which I'm assuming was somewhere in the 1600s or 1500s, somewhere in there, depending on what happened and depending what would have gone on in her mother's life, there's so many reasons as to why her mom might've decided that Agatha was, you know, the worst thing that could have ever happened to her. But obviously super, super sad to see that she took that out on Agatha. And I don't know if that was all her life or if it was something where it got amplified as Agatha got older, because again, without knowing the whole story, I could spin, I could wax poetic for a while about what that means or what it could potentially mean. Like if her mom treated her poorly since the day she was born, you know, Agatha's behavior could be born of her always trying to do things to get her mother to accept her or to love her. And if they were born into the witch community, if she was born into the witch community, which I'm assuming she did, she was, maybe it was that when her powers manifested, her mom looked at her and was like, oh my gosh, like now your power is something that I don't think is right. And you know what I mean? like. It could be that Agatha just got sick and tired of trying to please her mother. And we saw in the flashback from WandaVision that she was really shocked that her mom would go to the lengths of trying to get her killed. So I don't know if that was true shock because we all know that Agatha's a, <laughs> she's a performer, right? She could have been pretending that she was shocked, but I just think that in, you know, we saw her actually get genuinely emotional in this episode. So I do think that her mother has always been distant and cold to her and that Agatha probably was somebody who did her best to try to 
win her mom over and it just didn't work out that way. And eventually she went her own way. And, you know, I think all of us have heard stories of kids when they don't come from very loving or stable backgrounds that that can really spin them into a direction that is not great. And so that's potentially what could have happened to Agatha. I mean, in the end, these were choices. I'm not saying Agatha's absolved. She's done a lot of bad things and hurt a lot of people, but it feels like there's some background as to why she felt like that was the way to go. But anyway, we see that the, the, <laughs> the coven was all for punishing Agatha for a moment until they saw that history and they saw that her mother was just so very cold because I'm assuming that all of them probably had good relationships with their mothers and to see that and, and to see that play out, I think we saw them finally feel a bit of empathy for her. And then we see that Alice literally tried to stop her mom from taking over Agatha's body for what I'm assuming would be eternity because I think the witch's road is forever, right? And so Alice stepped in and forced her mom out of her body. But in doing so, she also did the one thing you don't do with Agatha, which is blast her with your power because Agatha can absorb power. I do believe Agatha that she didn't realize she was taking that much. Like that's the first time she's had anyone hit her with power since Wanda drained her. So I feel like it was kind of like a starving man at a meal, right? Like just shoving a bunch, you know, you know, if you've ever seen someone hasn't eaten for a very long time, their instinct is to gorge themselves and not even think about the fact that they'll probably make themselves sick after. I feel like it was the same thing with Agatha that she was so starved for magic that she really didn't even think about the fact that she was sucking Alice and dry. I, I don't think, or Alice, sorry. And I don't really think she wanted to. I really don't think it was her intent to take Alice out at least this early. I mean, technically she didn't need Alice anymore for being, I mean, if we go villain route with Al like with um, Agatha 100%, it could have been planned. She could have been like, oh, okay, cool. Like she gave me the power. I might as well take it now rather than wait till later. Her trial is done. So I'm not worried if I lose her, it's not a big deal. But I genuinely do think we were seeing real Agatha there for a moment where she was like, I didn't mean to. Like I was literally just, like I said, like a starving person who was just getting their first meal in a long time. And before I realized what was happening, it was too late. But understandably, Teen was mad. Teen was very, very, I think we just call him Billy now, right? We don't have to keep calling him Teen. The, the, the crown, I think, was a pretty, the crown that looks exactly like Wanda's. I think was a dead giveaway. Also, Agatha saying, you, you're so much like your mother. Um, that coming across, I, I think Agatha now knows who he is. And I think she might have suspected. And her saying that says that she did have a suspicion that that's who Teen could be, but a small part of her hoped that it was her son instead. But anyways, we see that, yeah, Teen, that was kind of slash Billy. That was his breaking point because, you know, Mrs. Hart bothered him a lot. You know, he was the one who buried Mrs. Hart or Sharon when Agatha was kind of like, mm, whatever. And now we see that he, like Alice is one of the first people he bonded with over the whole mom situation and losing the mom and, and having significant 13th years. And so, yeah, I think he felt a connection to her unlike he did with some of the other witches. And so, yeah, as he said to Agatha, I don't want to be like, this is the kind of witch or this is what being a witch is. I don't want to be a witch like that. I don't think I want to be one who prioritizing what I want over everything else. And it's interesting because when Billy came out after her, when she left the trial, she was still emotional. And you see that then she saw that she does have some magical power back. And I don't, I didn't get a sense of satisfaction from her expression. I could be wrong. But what I got from that was that she was kind of like, okay, this is something I have if I had, if that had to be the sacrifice, you know? And again, I mean, we have to remember that Billy has only been alive for 16 years, where Agatha's been alive for centuries. So the sad reality is that death is not going to hit her the same way that it's going to hit somebody else, right? She's seen a lot of people die. And so again, I don't think she's happy that Alice is gone, but at the same time, you know, she's like, well, we move, we move. Like what, what more? Like she's gone. I, I couldn't control it. It happened, you know, upside. I got a little power back, like let's go. And so when, when Billy came out and kind of accused her of, being a bit malicious in that moment, I do believe her when she was saying, I really didn't mean it. But then when he kind of came at her and kind of judged her in that moment, you know, again, was like, oh, that's the kind of witch you are, whatever. You just saw the wall and Agatha come right back up, right? You see that the sad face went away, the mask came back and then she's like, oh, you, sh you know, and just the the sinister mean Agatha, the one that we were getting used to seeing, that came back and so, it's very interesting. I love how Catherine's choosing to play Agatha in that, you know, she is very sarcastic. She's very, you know, especially in WandaVision, she seemed downright mean, oh, not mean, but she seems downright sinister in what the way she was playing with Wanda's mind. 
but I don't think it's that deep. Like I think that Agatha is very layered. And I do think, as I said, that she had a real moment inside the trial when she saw her mom and saw that her mom, that even in death, her mom still had all this hate for her. And so, but then, you know, again, she's been judged so often. She's gone through so much. She's done so much at this point that having someone who she did develop a soft spot for, Billy, come out and judge her and basically do exactly what her mom had just done in that trial a few moments earlier, Agatha's just like, nah, not today. The wall's going back up. Okay, you want me to be the bad guy? I'll be the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what I'm getting from it. So anyways, uh, before we get to what Billy did at the end, uh, the seven are in the witch's road now. We needed that, right? Because at this point, as much as the trials are fun, we did need to bring a sense of the danger and the urgency back <laughs> into the show. Uh, since it looks like the majority of it is gonna be the traveling of the witch's road. So the fact that them summoning Rio down means that they open the door for the seven to get down as well. They now have that to worry about, but it looks like as long as they're within the trials, the coven can't get in. And we got the history of the Salem Seven, at least the, the history that they're giving us of this one. I've heard a few of them, but in this particular show, they're saying this version is that they are the children of the witches that Agatha took, you know, took out because she took their powers. And basically they've gotten together and decided they were going to get their revenge on Agatha all these centuries later. So understandable, you know, I'm not going to say these kids are wrong for wanting their revenge. It's a long time to want it, but still understandable. So anyhow, we got that history and they are down there and that's obviously going to hasten the pace with these guys. I love the whole flying on a broom thing, by the way, that was super, super fun. I love that they're doing some very meta, very traditional witch tropes, even though we've got Lilia constantly being like, ah, I hate it, it's so, ah, but you know, it's, it's still fun though. Like <laughs> we gotta throw a sprinkle, sprinkle a little bit of what we actually believe or what we know of witches and witchcraft to be in, in most of our cultures out here. But anyway, so that was that. And then we saw at the end that um, Billy finally lost it. He got mad at these witches kind of condescending to him referring to him as nothing more than a pet. And I think with Agatha kind of throwing that wall up after everything, that was literally is okay, I'm done. And we saw a little taste of just what he's capable of. And that's no joke. Completely took over the minds of Lilia and Jen. Tossed Agatha into the mud, which how did he know that that mud was quicksand or was it the road or did he do that? I'm not sure yet. And then we see that he th then tossed the witches in. He's like, I'm gonna take this road down my damn self, actually. So now the questions come up to what exactly is Billy up to? How much does he know? Because that was not a fluke. What he did there was not a, oh, I just started using this now, right? It's, he went in, he told Agatha that he had no actual power, just practical magic that he was doing and that he needed the witch's road to get more powerful. Clearly not the case. He has power. He's had power. He knows how to use it. And he was basically lying and hiding that from Agatha all this time. So what is his real agenda? What did he want from Agatha? And is he going to get it now that they're not, you know, his whole endearing himself to her didn't work. I feel like it might have to do with her son though, despite everything he was asking or trying to ask about Nicholas. And you know, he got the wall and now after this little incident, you know, the wall is even further up. So I think that's why he resorted to finally using his magic. But I have so many questions. And I did say a few episodes back that I don't know that I fully believe Teen either, right? Like someone able to break, if he actually did break Agatha out of Wanda's spell, he already had to have a significant amount of power. That was no practical magic trick at all. But, you know, they definitely made it look ambiguous with Rio being in the picture as well. But anyhow... Good episode. Very good. I, as I said, I would have loved to see a bit more about Agatha and her past. I feel like since we had the whole half hour, I feel like we could, no, we didn't actually, we had less. It was more like a 20 minute episode, but I really feel like we could have delved a bit more into what led up to Agatha's mom feeling the way she did. But I'm sure that there's a reason that we pushed through this and we'll have to see what happens when we go to the next trial. Cause now we've got Lilia. Yeah. Lilia is the only one who's left now. So yeah, curious to see what her premonitions have been all about and if they're gonna lead to anything to do with this Witch's Road journey that they're all on right now. So yeah, another good episode. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I'll see you in the next one.